Well, thank you all. I want to thank uh, Mike Steidel and IPTC for inviting me here today. Uh, ASMP is a commercial photographer's trade association headquartered in the United States. We have approximately 7,000 members. Uh, we do have membership around the world. Our members are involved in editorial, commercial, architecture, lifestyle, uh, a number of uh, different areas of specialty. We are not uh, we are not primarily a group of retail photographers, so we, we don't really do a lot of the wedding and portrait work, but we're primarily uh, concentrating on B2B uh, image use. Uh, the opinions expressed today are my own as executive director of ASMP and do not necessarily represent the opinions of any other association. Uh, and additionally, as it will soon become painfully apparent. I'm not a technologist, uh, but rather an advocate uh, for photographers and practitioner. It's my firm belief that ultimately there can only be one broad solution to the various dilemmas created by the digital transition and that it needs to be a world solution. No longer can we think in terms of EU or US. Uh, the marketplace for images is fluid and international and the only solutions that will be successful in the long run are solutions that work for all markets. The holy grail for photography is founded on the creation and maintenance of persistent identifiers that facilitate the more effective connection of images to the marketplace and ultimately lead to compensation for rights holders. Because for us, uh, compensation is the, I guess, the ultimate issue. Sadly, my image market experience is mainly confined to the U.S., so I can only speak historically with direct knowledge in regard to what's happened in the last 10 years in our immediate market. And it has been a perfect storm. Consolidation in the stock industry combined with digital transition and the rise of crowdsourced image have all conspired to create enormous pressure on the individual photographer creator. Demands for greater rights positions by clients without additional compensation, have greatly reduced the value of secondary licensing. The long-running print paradigm has been turned upside down. Before the founding of ASMP in 1944 and into the 1990s, photographer negotiation agreements were all based on images moving to print. Now there are many more images used in the digital space, and yet there are no clearly established pricing models. More often than not, photographers today are faced with unlimited use license requests, or at the least, licenses that include electronic use rights on all platforms now known or ever to be created, and oftentimes including third-party use. Publishers are scrambling for every ounce of profit while they too are facing challenging times. Meanwhile, the depth and duration of these licenses is in large part a legal department response to the very significant and very real liability arising from an inability to access image rights information necessary to effectively track and manage their licensed images. Companies are looking to cut their losses and rather than take on the daunting task of entering into limited licenses that require ongoing attention, they simply ask for all rights. On the consumer side, the small use side, good and honest citizens think nothing of stealing images from the web. It's very difficult to communicate the value of images that only exist in the digital form. One of the problems in the photo space is that there is not currently a frictionless means to access understandable rights information or to obtain rights and permissions for small uses. As long as it's easier to right click than to license, the unauthorized, use of Im the unauthorized use of images will remain as the prevalent model. I think PicScout, uh, prior to their acquisition by Getty some years ago, had estimated that over 80% of the image occurrences on the web were unauthorized uses. It's been the failure of the image space to create frictionless licensing, including various forms of voluntary collective licensing, in particular in the US, 
that has contributed to our current dilemma. I tried to string together as many buzzwords as I could in this one slide. I think we're pretty effective. In large part, the problem has continued and solutions not found to date because there have been no universal, globally unique, persistent, machine readable, actionable, actionable, I can't even say it all, actionable identifiers for image files. In spite of the best intentions of the DMCA and WIPO, it remains easy to strip metadata from image files once they have left the creator or licensor. Additionally, as image rights information is dynamic, it changes over time, the practice of embedding static rights metadata into digital image files is an unsuitable, insufficient, and in fact dangerous means of communicating image rights. It doesn't serve the market well at all. In many, if not most instances, embedded rights information is outdated soon after image delivery. Embedded rights metadata cannot be easily or reliably updated after image delivery and can provide inaccurate rights and license history information. In the current licensing environment, the time has come for rights holders to accept appropriate measure of professional responsibility <clears throat> when delivering licensed images to their clients. Taking whatever steps are available to communicate rights and attribution information to their clients in such a way that the information is accessible, understandable, machine readable, and otherwise sufficient to allow their clients to officially, efficiently manage licensed images. It's no longer acceptable for photographers or for that matter picture libraries to simply deliver their images while ignoring their professional responsibility to also deliver information sufficient to allow their clients to use those images and avoid infringement. I propose that delivering images, waiting for the client to exceed the license, and then instigating litigation while legal is not professional in this day and age. To address these issues, clients joined with creators and picture libraries to form the PLUS Coalition, a global nonprofit organization fo focused exclusively on standards and systems for the communication and management of image rights information. As most of you know, IPTC is a leading member of the PLUS Coalition, participated actively in the development of the PLUS standards, and has adopted the PLUS standards within the IPTC extension. As a nonprofit coalition, representing both buyers and sellers, I believe that PLUS is positioned to service the image space with an agnostic viewpoint. The PLUS Coalition has, in addition, developed persistent globally unique identifiers for parties, images, and image licenses, and is currently developing the PLUS Registry, a global nonprofit hub for image rights information, employing PLUS identifiers, image recognition, and optional, optional steganographic watermarking to allow anyone in any country to easily access image rights information for any use. The use of persistent identifiers to discover remotely stored dynamic rights metadata is the answer to many of the challenges facing image creators, distributors, and users, and must become part of the workflow. Photographers, picture libraries, and all image licensors must become accustomed to embedding standardized identifiers into their image files while storing image metadata in secure, interconnected systems accessible to their clients. Software companies providing DAM solutions, licensing platforms, and image editing applications must move to incorporate PLUS functionality, allowing their users to use identifiers and the registry from within their existing workflows. Uh, at ASMP, for years, we have been trying to work with the U.S. Copyright Office to have them provide, as soon as they created their uh, uh, ECO, their online registration system, we've been trying to get them to supply us with an API so that we could go to Adobe, go to Microsoft, go to the other uh, digital asset management uh, developers and uh, allow them to create an action that would allow a photographer on the ingestion of a job, they would select X number of images from within the job and simply push a button that would send them simultaneously to the Copyright Office for Registry, 
uh, uh, for, for, for copyright registration, send them to the PLUS registry, uh, send them to an orphan works registry if, if, if another one existed. Uh, they could, uh, could be federated across any number of, of applications. And uh, it's been a request that's been standing for at least four <coughs> years now, and we're still waiting for the API. And, and my friends at Adobe and uh, Microsoft and Apple tell me this is a no-brainer, but for some reason it seems to be a significant brainer for the Copyright Office, uh, but they're under new leadership and we're hoping that uh, things, things improve. Uh, let's see, so in the U.S. and other countries offering copyright registration options, these applications should provide actions allowing users to simultaneously register their images with federated registries and with the re relevant copyright offices. The creation of this workflow will make new licensing models and uh, new licensing methods and models possible, including an efficient model to provide compensation for small uses of images on the web, uses that heretofore are fulfilled exclusively through theft. Again, I'm not talking about the uses of images in advertising campaigns and major publications in print and on the web. These uses will still require negotiated fees. However, the many small uses, commercial and personal, in blogs and the myriad of other web-based and electronic media are primary targets for some form of voluntary collective licensing that would create an income stream where for many none existed. Few will get rich, but the licensing model will be maintained, new variations will evolve, and the income will contribute to a sustainable future for image rights holders. The key to this future is the ability to propagate in significant numbers machine-readable persistent identifiers into image files and to make image rights information accessible and usable. Ultimately, it's all about connecting rights information, providing for frictionless licensing, and rights management throughout our world market. I thank you very much.